Terrorism ver Terrorism versus Jihad Nowadays, the world suffers from terrorist acts everywhere. Muslims all over the world are accused of being terrorists, because Islam calls for jihad. But actually the world's concept about Islamic jihad is totally wrong. Before making any judgment, you have first to ask yourself, what is the meaning of jihad? What are the kinds of jihad? What are the purposes of jihad? Against whom do Muslims practice jihad? What are the rules of jihad? What are the differences between jihad and terrorism? If you have responses to all of these questions, things must be clear. Jihad, what does that mean? First, you can find simply the meaning of jihad in an ordinary dictionary of the Arabic language, so that you can avoid any misconceptions. Jihad in Arabic means the exerting of one's utmost power. What are the kinds of jihad? There are three kinds, jihad against visible enemy, against devil's temptations, and against one's own passion and desires. Actually, a very important misconception prevails in the West regarding the Islamic injunction of jihad. Many think that spreading Islam is by swords, because they totally misunderstand the meaning of jihad against enemy. Quran has mentioned the cases of jihad. One of these verses shows the reason behind allowing fight against enemies, as Allah says permission, to fight, has been given to those who are being fought, because they were wronged. And indeed, Allah is competent to give them victory. They are, those who have been evicted from their homes without right only because they say, Our Lord is Allah. And were it not that Allah checks the people, some by means of others, there would have been demolished monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques in which the name of Allah is much mentioned. And Allah will surely support those who support Him. Indeed, Allah is powerful and exalted in might. Al-Hajj, 39-40 Allah has given permission to fight to the believers who are fought by the idolaters, due to their being oppressed by their enemies. Allah has the power to help the believers against their enemies without fighting. However, the wisdom of Allah required that the believers be tested through fighting the disbelievers. Those whom the disbelievers unjustly exiled from their homes, not due to any crime they committed but because they said, Our Lord is Allah, we have no Lord besides Him. Had Allah not legislated for the prophets and believers fighting against their enemies, they would have invaded the places of worship, destroying the monasteries of the monks, Christian churches. Jewish synagogues, and the mosques of the Muslims which have been made for prayer and in which the Muslims remember Allah abundantly. Allah will help those who help His religion and prophet. Allah has power to help whoever helps His religion and is mighty, with nobody able to overcome Him. Al-Hajj, 39-40 Another verse shows against whom Muslims should fight, Allah says and fight in the way of Allah those who fight you, but transgress not the limits. Truly, Allah likes not the transgressors. Fight in order to raise the word of Allah, against those of the disbelievers who fight you to turn you away from the religion of Allah. But do not overstep the limits of Allah by killing children, women, the elderly, or by mutilating the dead and so on. Allah does not love those who overstep the limits He has established and made sacred. Al-Baqarah, 190 Against whom do Muslims practice jihad? Allah also has recommended Muslims to deal with people who don't assault them kindly. As Allah says Allah does not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who fought not against you on account of religion nor drove you out of your homes verily. Allah loves those who deal with equity. Allah does not prohibit you from those who have not fought you on account of your Islam, and who have not expelled you from your homes. That you be good and fair to them by giving them any right they have against you. An example of this is how Asma bint Abu Bakr al siddiq behaved with her disbelieving mother when she came to visit her after she had taken permission from the Prophet, peace be upon him, for this end instructed her to join family ties. Allah loves those who are just to themselves, their families and what they are in charge of. al Mumtahina 8 In Islam, making peace is recommended to protect people's lives and to end bloodshed, as Allah says, but if they incline to peace, you also incline to it, and, put your, trust in Allah. Verily, He is the be all hearer, all knower. If they incline to a truce to give up fighting, then, O Messenger, do the same, enter into a truce with them and place your reliance and faith in Allah, because He will never desert you. He is the one who hears your statements and knows your intentions and actions. al 61 The previous verses sum up the true meaning of Islamic Jihad. Where it just calls to defend oneself against whoever starts to attack. So, what do you think about a religion that calls for accepting peace deals and ending of wars? Does this religion really call for violence? What are the rules of jihad? Islam does provide guidelines in war that Muslims should adhere to. 
In those guidelines, the killing of women, children, the old and the weak is expressly forbidden. Even destruction of a standing tree or crop is not allowed, as Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the first caliph, instructed Islamic armies. This is based on the Prophet's saying, I instruct you in ten matters, do not kill women, children, the old, or the infirm, do not cut down fruit-bearing trees, do not destroy any town. The Prophet also instructed that no non-combatant can be killed by the Muslim army under any circumstances. Do not kill any old person, any child or any woman. What are the differences between jihad and terrorism? The real face of terrorism. On the other hand, terrorism, in fact, is completely the opposite of jihad. Any act of violence that instills fear in the minds and hearts of innocent people is an act of terrorism. Particularly when this fear is not justified as a way of punishment to a wrong action or a crime committed, not that it is okay to terrorize a wrongdoer or criminal in Islam, on the contrary. Instead, it is a fear from the powerful who wishes to become more powerful. Terrorism is often fueled by materialistic or territorial goals generally with no regard to religion, whereas jihad is the struggle on the righteous path to God and has no other goal apart from this. Terrorism is always directed towards the killing of innocent civilians and may be by ways of explosions, attacks, etc., while jihad is not permitted against innocents. To conclude, jihad is a term used to describe one's duty towards Islam while terrorism is an act committed to instill fear in people's hearts. Jihad need not always be violent however, terrorism is always violent. Jihad is always performed for God, while terrorism always has materialistic goals. Terrorism is always directed to harm innocent civilians while jihad does not permit this. What does jihad really mean to Muslims? The Christian scholar Ira G. Zepp, Jr. explained the term of jihad that the essential meaning of jihad is the spiritual, psychological, and physical effort we exert to be close to God and thus achieve a just and harmonious society. Jihad literally means striving or struggle and is shortened for jihad, to fight. In a sense, every Muslim is a mujahid, one who strives for God, a Muslim primer book, the Christian scholar Ira G. Zepp, Jr., p. 133-135. It has been translated into English as holy war, something which often suggests using force to impose Islam on others, rather than a legitimate self-defense. However, jihad actually means in Arabic making all possible effort or striving hard and struggling. This is by no means restricted to war and military fighting, for which the specific word used in Arabic is qaitl. Both words are used in the Quran. The wider perspective and connotations of jihad may be clearly felt in these verses. And as for those who strive hard in our cause, we shall most certainly guide them to paths that lead to us, and, behold, God is indeed with the doers of good Quran.com 2969. And those who strive hard in my cause, seeking my pleasure, I will certainly grant them the ability to tread the straight path. Indeed, Allah is with those who do good by helping, assisting, and guiding them. Al Ankabut, 69. You can also follow the hashtag, hashtag MyJihad on Facebook. One of the meanings of the word jihad is to defend oneself and human rights. Muslims could practice force to defend themselves against the combatants, not the civilians. Nothing in Islam says to impose Islam by force or to declare war against non-Muslims everywhere. Non-Muslims have never ceased to exist within Muslim countries and in the whole world throughout history, including the time when Muslims enjoyed an enormous political and military power. The prominent jurist Ahmad Ibn Idris al-Qadhafi, d. 684 h. 1285, stated that any Muslim who commits an act that hurts a non-Muslim, i.e. in Islam called dhimmi referring to a person who has rights on Muslims by pacts and Islamic constitution, even with saying an offensive word, or backbiting against him, her, or causing him, her, any harm, such a Muslim would be violating the guarantees secured by God and the conveyor of his message and the religion of Islam, al-Qarafi. Ahmad Ibn Idris, al-Furak, Alam al-Qutub, Bayarat, N.D., Volume 3, page 14. Muslims are urged to conform to the general rule of peace and cooperation with all if there is no war, no aggression. And if they incline to peace, incline to it as well, and place your trust in God, verily. He alone is all-hearing, all-knowing. And should they seek but to deceive you, behold, God is enough, security, for you. Quran.com 861 If they incline to a truce to give up fighting, then, O Messenger, do the same, enter into a truce with them and place your reliance and faith in Allah, because He will never desert you. He is the one who hears your statements and knows your intentions and actions. Al-Anam, 61 Islam and peace, Salam, come from the same Arabic root, since Islam aims to secure peace within one's own self and with all others. 
O you who have attained a faith, enter wholly into peace and do not follow Satan's footsteps. Quran.com 2208. O you who have faith in Allah and follow his messenger, enter Islam completely and do not leave out any part of it like how the people of the scripture believed in some parts of the book and disbelieved other parts. Do not follow the ways of Satan, because he has made it clear that he is your enemy. If you slip up or go astray after clear proofs have come to you, then know that Allah is mighty in his ability and power, wise in his planning and establishing of sacred laws. So, fear and glorify him. Al-Baqarah 208-209 To sum up, terrorism cannot be the legitimate jihad, which strictly observes the legitimacy and morality of the means, which also strictly observing that legitimacy of the goals and ends. Targeting the noncombatants and civilians and committing such enormous killings and destructiveness through clandestine operations, which are fulfilled with blazing bitterness. Rancor and malevolence cannot be attributed to Islam, whose prophet declares, I am no sin as a curse, I am but sin as a mercy, Sahih Muslim. For more, check the statistics, terrorism is a real threat, but the threat to the U.S. for Muslim terrorists has been exaggerated.